Andrew Bitcoin is rejected from a key level down almost 3% today after trying to break from a critical level. In this video, I'm going to break out exactly what is transpiring and what the next potential big trade on Bitcoin is. As always, guys, smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to take any of these trades with us, you can do so using Bybit or BitGet. Links in description. Those are the two platforms I use to take these trades. Now, guys, if you've been monitoring this with us, this played out exactly as we predicted exactly as we predicted i shared that with you on telegram i was giving you guys live updates on telegram if you're not in telegram get involved links in description get onto our free telegram channel to make sure you get these updates and i shared this with you guys this was going to be the pivotal level i left the arrow in from yesterday's video we had to beat this and unfortunately we got rejected from this critical level we were unable to break from this resistance so congratulations to anybody who traded this up towards the resistance level and took your position out remember i said that this was two trades here one you want to take the first trade up towards here if you guys were looking to take a trade and then the next trade I'm looking for is a break of this level, which may come in our next impulsive move. So what is next for Bitcoin? Can we now get some some support coming in? We don't want to head all the way back down to this low. We want to keep a higher low. So there's our low. There's our high. Can we just rotate somewhere around here and reattempt another break of this 20,300 level? That is what I'm watching for here on Bitcoin. And that trade could be a nice big impulsive move. You can see that the next peak isn't all the way up till the first bit here at 22,000 at the top of the channel, but then you'd want to be looking at your previous high, which is at 22,800. So a nice big move that could potentially come from this. Now, why are we seeing redness in the market? We need to now follow this through to understand what is going on, because as you guys know, this channel is not just about the technicals. Yes, I'll share the technicals with you, but we need to monitor the fundamentals as well. So I'm going to come on to the fundamentals. But before I do that, let's also look at the other version of the pattern, which I was sharing with you guys yesterday. We're in this falling wedge which you can see we broke out from the yellow line here this is the move we got to the breakout and the technical target from this breakout is to indeed get you up to the top of the wedge which is that 22,800 level but what you saw was i also shared this white pattern this white channel within it and that is exactly where we got rejected i shared this out you can see the arrow exactly rejecting exactly where we just said right so yeah as moon boys would like to say exactly as predicted that's happened Cool. So now we need to see, can we get the bounce? Do we need to come all the way down here? Even if we did, it's not the end of the world. Even if it did want to come all the way down here and then work its way back up, that's okay. This is predictable. We can also trade this move here, but more importantly, the breakout from this channel is what's going to be exciting because remember, we want to be taking this relief rally up until towards the top. And there's a reason I said relief rally, and I don't want you guys to get confused. You know, when we're talking about these short-term trades, we're taking opportunities to make short-term profit off of some trades. And if you guys want to take short-term trades, understand that that's active trading. That's putting a stop loss, having a take profit, trading patterns. You guys can join me. You guys can do that. Links in the description. Go ahead and trade. But in terms of my long-term portfolio, I'm still preparing for a lot more pain. I'm going to go into now explaining what is going on in terms of some of the macro elements. So what we did see was that yet today... The markets have opened up in the red. So they've pretty much given up some of their gains from yesterday. NASDAQ down 2% today, 1.5% on the S&P. Dow Jones down 1.23. We had a really strong start to October with a strong Monday and Tuesday. Now we're giving that up on Wednesday. Markets are still tentative. Look, the reality is the markets know that we're in a downward trend. They know that there's still some more room here to squeeze out some of this bear market. There could be another 10% to go. I mean, we've fallen 25% in traditional markets. Typically, you can see a 35% drawdown. So there's still a bit more to go. Now, in the positive side, we know that five out of the last bear markets since 1950, okay, five of them ended in October. So that's a good thing on our side. But also, some of the macros aren't quite stacking up. And I'm going to share with you some of the macros, but we're also going to look at some of the interesting on-chain metrics as well. So stay tuned with me till the very end and do not forget to subscribe. So what did we have? Well, I'm going to come on to the ADP figure, but I do want to start off with the jolts figure. So the jolts figure is your job openings. Now, remember, Jerome Powell is trying to make a dent in this labor market. He wants the labor market to weaken. Remember, this is the reason that he thinks that inflation is not coming down due to this wage price spiral challenge. So we've seen it did come down. The number of job openings fell hugely from 11.17 all the way down to 10, beating the forecast. The forecast was 10.7. It came in at 10 flat, which is huge. So we are seeing the number of job openings come down, which is good. Less people commanding jobs, soften the labor market, should start to reduce wages, bringing inflation down. Okay, Not great for people losing their jobs or not able to find jobs, but that's something that Jerome Powell is having to um, sacrifice right now. He needs to sacrifice that. He's made that very clear. Now let's move on to the ADP figures. 
These are your private jobs figures. These come out a little bit before your non-farm payrolls. And the non-farm payrolls come out tomorrow. This is the important figure we want to look out for tomorrow. And we'll be covering that on this channel, so make sure you're involved. But this gives us a precursor. And what we can see is it came in at 208,000 new jobs. This was against the consensus of around 200,000. So more jobs were created uh, in the month than expected. So this is another thing for us to keep an eye on here is this ADP jobs figure. Could that be a precursor for tomorrow's non-farm payrolls? Where we're expecting a number around 250,000 on the consensus here. Again, the previous month was 300, uh, 315,000. Can we see that coming at 250,000 or lower jobs showing that the labor market is weakening? That is what we want to see. Now, let's come back onto the charts. Few interesting things to point out is you are seeing the yield start to climb today. Remember, when the treasury yield goes up, risk goes off, we see stocks start to fall. And for whatever reason right now, whether you argue it's right or wrong, Bitcoin currently is still correlated to equities. Now, longer term, I don't think that relationship is going to hold. I made videos about this very clearly where I, I'm saying, look, currently we're correlated to equities and I'm going to respect that. And I'm going to use that to trade and inform my investment decisions. But I do think there will be a moment, maybe this impending financial crisis could be that moment where Bitcoin starts to decouple. When Bitcoin suddenly says, hang on a second, we're not created just to be the same as all these other asset classes. We were created as an antithesis to the existing establishment, as something different. Bitcoin was born of the financial crisis in 2008, right? It was in those moments that this was created as an antidote to say, no, we're different. This is an alternative. This is another route that we don't have to opt into the financial system. So this is why I think that narrative can start to play out where we can start to see Bitcoin show some strength if this financial crisis deepens or worsens. So that's an interesting narrative I'm looking out for. And that's another reason why for my long-term portfolio, I'm in the market. A lot of people are like, why are you holding in such a crazy market even though you think there's some more downside? It's because of that exact reason. I cannot tell you the exact time. And anybody who tells you they can is lying when Bitcoin's going to decouple, when Bitcoin will go on its next run, where people start to realize that this is a hedge against inflation. This has a different narrative to all the other risk on asset classes. It's not the same as investing in a growth stock. It's fundamentally different. So that is the reason. Now, let's go on ahead and take a look at the dollar index. So you're seeing the dollar index here is getting its bounce here on the four hourly. And this is what's causing some of the pain here in crypto. Now, the good thing is it's still to the bottom side of its four hourly EMA ribbon, okay? That's good. But what's not so great is when you come into the daily, you're seeing what this is doing. And again, just like I warned of plenty of times while people were getting excited, everybody always falls for this. When dollar index has its down moment here, you see Bitcoin move to the upside and everybody chases those green candles. They chase the green candles, chase the green candles, and ultimately they're getting wrecked because then what happens is dollar index has shown a big move to the upside. So we've got to give respect to the dollar index to say, is it ready to have its next big move to the upside? And that's what we have to re get ready for. Now, if I see this close below the EMA ribbon, then I'm going to get more excited, right? Because we've not closed properly below the EMA ribbon here on the dollar index for quite a while. So that's the next big coup for us is to see that dollar index really start to soften and weaken, but we don't know when that's going to happen. So for now, we have to give the bias to strength in the dollar index, okay? Now, you can also see some weakness here in the euro and the GBP both getting rejected exactly as we said, guys. I hate to keep saying that, but this is exactly what we said. We said, guys, look, we are seeing this run up, but it's got to get through its EMA ribbon and it's not. It's getting rejected as is the euro and the dollar index is bouncing from its equivalent uh, EMA ribbon on the other side. So very predictable, very tradable patterns. And if you guys want to trade this again, join me. Links in description. I use the two platforms. They support the channel. So definitely get yourself set up. If you're in the US and you don't want to go through KYC or don't want to use a VPN, BitGet is a great alternative. Otherwise, all your other areas, Bybit is fantastic. And that's literally what I use on a day-to-day -day basis for my trades. Uh, okay, now I want to share with you a few interesting on-chain metrics around some of the hash power, because we're always talking about the price action, but let's actually talk about the underlying strength of the Bitcoin network, the bit you can't replicate, which is the hash power, right? It's the number of miners who are online. That is what you cannot replicate. That is the asset behind Bitcoin. And as you're seeing here is you are seeing that the fifth, the 30 day uh, average here is crossing the 60 day. That's the shorter term one is crossing above, which is a bullish sign here for the hash rate and showing that it's continuing to show higher levels. Okay. So more mining rigs, but higher cost of production. So we are seeing that, which is a good sign. Last time we had this crossover, nice big move to the upside. Similarly here, if you go back, nice big move to the upside. So that's a positive sign here on the hash ribbon, you're getting this divergence where the hash ribbon is climbing to the upside, but price is still meandering to the downside. If we also take a look at the mining pulse, this gives you an idea of 
the speed of the hash rate recovery. Now, what you, I want you to focus on is look at the orange line and look at the bear markets. What you notice in these red circles here, these pinky red circles here, is a rapid slowdown. So the higher the number, the slower the recovery in the hash rate. Now, these numbers tend to spike during bear markets. And we also had the spike during the summer of 2021, which was a huge spike there. Now, what we're noticing here in the blue is we haven't spiked these levels in the bear market. So there's two things that could be happening. Either the capitulation is not going to be severe, as severe as past markets, or that capitulation is still yet to come. And that's the worrying bit. Okay, so we've got to ask ourselves, has the network just matured? Is it now just representative of the fact that now so many miners are publicly traded companies with good balance sheets and operating in a far more mature manner than previous cycles? Or is it that we still have this spike to come? And that is what we need to look out for here on the mining pulse. And then finally, another indicator I like to look at is your Puel multiple. Now, what the Puel multiple allows you to do is it allows you to identify when you're recovering nicely. So we formed a low here in about June period. And at this point where my cursor is, we were sitting at about 0.33 on the Puel multiple. That means miners were earning about 0.33, or in other words, 33% of their yearly average. That's a lot. Imagine I took your yearly income and only gave you 33% of it. You're going to feel it. But now you're seeing a big recovery back to 63%. That's a big difference, right? Imagine I took your yearly income and I put you in a couple of months where you only had 33% of that. That's going to hurt. And then I let you go back to 63%. Big sigh of relief, bit more comfortable. Companies are feeling more comfortable. And that is why us being at this 20,000 price point, which we're at, is not the same as when we were there earlier in June. We're far more stronger position, even though the price point is not very different. We are, where we are here is a far greater position than where we were in June when we first came down to the downside. Remember, fear and greed index when we first fell was horrible. Fear and, fear and greed index when we touched 17,600 was as low as six. Now we're sitting at 25. So we're starting to see the markets a lot more confident. Mining companies are a lot more stronger in this situation. And more importantly, when we've seen these bounces out of the green zone, it signaled a big recovery in the Bitcoin price. So that is a good pattern we're seeing here, a good bounce from this green area. So something else for us to monitor. So there you have it, guys. A really interesting day for Bitcoin. Huge rejection from a key level, but I'm monitoring that channel carefully. I will be giving you guys updates in the Telegram completely free. Make sure you're involved. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at RealJars01 as well. I'll give a lot of updates there when I'm unable to make videos. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Go watch this video here, and I'll see you in the next one.